Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 69 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In the last tutorial, we looked at linear regression, and in this tutorial, let's have a quick look at multilinear regression, which is no different than linear regression from implementation point of view. But just to give you a quick idea of the difference between linear and multilinear regression, first of all, let's have a quick look at what we have done the last time, right? So linear regression is you're fitting uh, X and Y to a straight line. And how are we fitting it? By actually calculating the difference between each data point uh, and the fitted line, or our, our first iteration of fitted line, and looking at the error, squaring the error, because the error can be on either side. We don't want the total error to cancel out. So we square it, and we add it, and we take a mean. So this is mean squared error. And now we just try to minimize it just by moving the moving the line. Okay, and that's this this is called a loss function, and our goal is to minimize this loss function. Now, how is this different from multilinear uh, or how is multilinear different? And as you can imagine, it's exactly like linear regression, except you have multiple coefficients. Except instead of y equals to uh, mx plus c, or in this example, y equals to beta. 0 uh, plus beta 1 x1 uh, this would be your simple linear equation now instead of dependent you know y dependent on one of these x values it's actually dependent on multiple x's okay so it can be uh, it, uh, again going back to our uh, example of okay is this a basketball or a tennis ball or a cricket ball or something else then uh, your x can be uh, one of this can be the the diameter of this uh, you know uh, of this basketball for example and also the x2 can be the color of it and x3 can be the uh, texture of it does it have any texture is it fuzzy if so it's tennis ball and so on so these are the various coefficients that's the only difference now the assumption is that the independent variables are not correlated. My x1, uh, x2, x3, they are not correlated. One is the circumference, one is uh, you know uh, the color, the other one is the texture. But uh, you cannot just have, for example, the diameter and circumference uh, as the same. Well, you can have it, but you know that it's not going to have uh, much of a difference, you know, when you fit this to linear uh, equations. So the assumption is the independent variables are not correlated. So if you have these highly correlated ones, drop the ones that are, uh, you know, that you think are irrelevant. So with that knowledge, let's jump into our Spider IDE and get a quick look at how do we implement this. Implementation wise, it's exactly same as linear regression. So for this example, let's look at the heart disease data set and uh, the effect that the independent variables like biking and smoking have on the dependent variable heart disease. Okay, let's have a quick look at this data set. And again, you can Google search for heart disease data set. Uh, you, should, you should find that. And I'll see if I have uh, uh, rights to distribute this. Uh, uh, I get my data sets from uh, Kaggle.com. And uh, please go ahead and download the data sets. I'll probably include a link to this data set over there. Okay, so as usual, we're going to import the right libraries for plotting and data handling, for data handling pandas, and uh, for data manipulation numpy, and for plotting Seaborn or matplotlib. So let's go ahead and import our uh, data. In this case, I call it carddata.csv and assign this to a variable called df. And right away here, let's actually remove my variables from my last tutorial, and let's start this one more time. There you go. And now we should see a data frame. If I open this, there should be four columns. The first one is unnamed, which seems to be just the number one through, you know, it's just a ID. We can drop that because that has nothing to do with our linear regression. The second column is biking. The third one is smoking. And the finally, this is heart disease. So apparently the high value of heart disease means you get heart disease and low value is low heart disease. But this is what we need to predict. This is a regression problem. This is not a classification. This is not zero or one. We're predicting a continuous value that apparently goes from zero through some number, okay? Uh, 20 or so. So this is our data. And uh, if, if you want, you can go ahead and print the header to look at it. But first thing first, let's go ahead and drop the unnamed zero, which seems to be just the ID. 
So let's go ahead and drop it. Now let's have a look at, okay, uh, biking versus heart disease. Let's go ahead and plot it. Again, let me open the plots here. So here is how the plot looks like. And again, if you use Seaborn LM plot, it includes the regression line right there along with the data for display. Unfortunately, Seaborn doesn't give you the coefficients or the model or the fitting model or something. So this is mostly for visualization purposes only, which is still okay. So here it is. The more biking you do, the less heart disease risk you have, which obviously makes sense. Now let's look at smoking. It's probably exactly the opposite. Well, it's not as highly correlated as I predicted. I'm a bit surprised, I should say. I was hope, uh, well, not hoping, I was expecting something like this. So it looks like biking is uh, has a very strong effect on whether you get heart disease or not than smoking, which still shows some trend here, okay? Uh, so now we have two variables, one outcome, which is heart disease value. How do we do that, okay? So as usual, we have to define our X and Y. So I'm defining my X as everything except for uh, the column heart disease. There are many ways you can define this. You can just, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is the one we can stick to. And why did I call heart dot disease? Apparently, that's the title of, uh, let's go back. That's how, that's the title of our column, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, define our X by dropping this. Now, if you look at my X data frame, it should have only two columns now, biking and smoking. These are the two variables that influence the outcome, which is heart disease. So my Y is just the heart disease from my original data set, okay, or data frame. So I have defined my X and Y. Again, I mentioned this in the last tutorial. What do we do typically for any machine learning? You divide your data into training and testing data sets so you can use the testing for validation purposes. So from scikit-learn model selection, I'm going to import train test split and I'm going to split it into 30% for testing and 70% for training. Okay, and I'm assigning the output to these variables. Okay, x uh, train, x test, y train, y test. Okay, so if you look up here again, out of 498 total data points, 348 belong to x train and 150 for testing. That's decent size for testing purposes. Now let's go ahead and import our model from scikit-learn, exactly what we have done in the last tutorial. And I'm creating an instance for my model, linear model and uh, dot linear regression. And like I mentioned again in the last tutorial, I could have just done dot fit and then just fit it with my X train and Y train in one line. It's up to you how you would like to do it. But I, in this example, I'm going to define the model first and then fit the model as another step right here. Okay. Again, this is very fast. It's done before we even noticed. And let's first look at the score, which is R squared value. How well did this fit? Is it 99%, 97%, what is it? So let's go ahead and print it. So it looks like we got 98%, which is an excellent fit, okay? Uh, from an R squared point of view. Uh, it's, it's again, a measure of how well this fits, that's it. Now let's actually do a prediction. So let's uh, predict on the test values. Remember, we are holding out 30% for testing. So let's uh, uh, create an output called prediction test by testing on these. And the way you do that is we assigned a parameter called model where we are holding all the information about uh, this uh, specific model. So all we are doing is model.predict. And predict on what? And within predict, in fact, I could have given a uh, value here, uh, so it predicts an outcome. But in this case, I'm giving it a list of values, which is x underscore test. Okay, that's the uh, only difference. Okay, so it did predict, and my prediction test results are right here. Okay, and uh, for corresponding x results. So let's go ahead and predict my y test, and uh, you know, so we can visually inspect. Again, let's just do one data point. So the first data point, it says 6.75 for an input of 487, okay? Uh, 6.75, and uh, we are predicting 5.61. I don't know if it's good or bad. That's why just looking at this doesn't make any sense. So let's go ahead and print out the mean squared error. Again, we did this in the last tutorial. Mean squared error is prediction minus uh, the test squared, and then you take the mean. And the mean squared error is 0 0.00029. 
that is very good for me. And uh, if you want the coefficients, which uh, uh, factor helped the most? Because smoking may not be correlated with heart disease, but uh, biking uh, appears to be from the graph, you know, to be a bit more correlated. So does that mean my biking has more weight in predicting the outcome? Possibly. So if you want to figure out what contributed the most towards the prediction, you can pr uh, print out your coefficients. This is exactly, I alluded to this in the last tutorial where I said, okay, you can print out the coefficients, but it was only one. So I saved that for this tutorial. So here you see it. Uh, go ahead and uh, the way you extract this is model dot coef underscore. That prints out the coefficients and model dot intercept prints out the intercept values. Think of this as y equals mx plus c for your equation and m is your slope and c is your intercept, right? So it's pretty much the same. So let's go ahead and print this out and it's actually printing as uh, minus 0 0.2 and 0 0.17. This negative corresponds to a decreasing uh, correlation. So if I go back to the plots, you know that here it's going to be minus, yeah? And for this one, it's going to be positive. That's exactly what it's showing us here, okay? Uh, for the first one, which is biking, it's negative 0.2, and for the second one, it's 0.17. So if you have 10 different coefficients, you can actually see all the 10 values down here. Now, uh, I mentioned you can also provide an input. Let's actually do model.predict on values of 13, 2, and 23. So you should see, uh, oh, sorry, this, this is a different model. I was predicting it on a different, uh, you can actually provide uh, different uh, inputs and you can actually predict. Instead of giving X test, you can actually give uh, just a list of values. Okay, so that's another way of actually uh, testing it out on individual values. But this this uh, uh, testing it on the entire data set, I mean, a whole bunch of list of values definitely makes sense. Okay, so this is our uh, conclusion of uh, linear regression. And again, I hope uh, you found this tutorial to be very useful. And in the next tutorial, let's uh, look at another machine learning topic. Again, we are going through these baby steps, building towards hopefully uh, uh, a model that can predict or that can segment a bunch of your images. And that will happen in probably five to six tutorials from now. So please stay tuned and please keep watching these and do not skip any of these videos because uh, there is information in each of this video that explains that makes sense you know, when you look at the upcoming videos. So please follow this as a tutorial. Thank you very much and let's meet in the next tutorial.